everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are, and welcome to the OTS webinar series. Today, we are very excited um, to feature uh, Dr. Mano Manaharan for our talk today. Uh, of course, he's a recognized expert in many things, one of which being dancing, another one being his t-shirt collection. Uh, but today, he's here to talk about the world of Galvac conjugate nucleic acid therapeutics. Um, so, um, as I may, I may have mentioned, or maybe I, I got too excited about the dancing and the t-shirts, uh, but he is also our 2019 OT, OTS Lifetime Achievement Award winner. Uh, he's a Senior Vice President, Scientific Advisory Board Member, and Distinguished Research Scientist at Alnylam Pharmaceuticals. Uh, he was actually the first chemist that was hired there. Um, so his team has pioneered the discovery and development of chemical modifications that make RNA interference-based human therapeutics possible and led to the first RNAi therapeutic approved by the FDA in 2018. He has a distinguished career um, worldwide as a chemist in areas of oligonucleotide chemical modification, conjugation chemistry, and delivery platforms. Uh, and his research group was demonstrated for the first time the human therapeutic applications of the Galnet conjugated oligonucleotides while he was at Alnylam. And so this has, of course, revolutionized a nucleic acid-based therapeutic, uh, and we're very excited to hear about that today. So I will, before I pass, pass the mic over to uh, Mano, I will remind you, you can use uh, the Q&A function to ask questions. And so at the end of the talk, Ronald uh, will help to moderate the question session. So please feel free to ask there. Um, if you need anything, you have any questions, you can also reach us through the chat. All right, so go ahead, Mano, take it away. Thank you very much, Erin. I hope uh, you're all able to see my slide and able to hear me okay. I want to thank uh, Erin and uh, Ronald and Jerry and the entire Alnylam board for giving this opportunity to me and Alnylam to share our work um, in this OTS webinar. Uh, OTS webinar connects me with uh, all the youngsters in the field around the world. And I want to thank all of them. And before I forget, I want to thank all my colleagues at Alnylam and our collaborators at Alnylam, collaborators of Alnylam who made this story possible today. And more importantly, the patients and their families who participated in the various clinical programs. I was told that <clears throat> several hundred people have registered around the world for this OTS webinar. In that spirit, I want to share this phrase, yadum ure, yavarum kele, meaning we all come from the same village and we are all related. And we have gathered here in the interest of human therapeutics, just like what Hippocrates said, wherever the art of medicine is loved, there is also a love of humanity. Since I'm a chemist, I want to share this picture with you, which I came across a couple of months ago in India. Although I was born in India, I never had a chance to see this picture until February of uh, this year. This is a picture or a painting of a Buddha, which was found in Ajanta Caves. And according to history, this is nearly 2,000 years old. And this is the uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site. The reason why I want to share this is to just how much amazing to appreciate the chemistry bent behind this painting and the, what are all the ingredients which went, namely the pigments, which were used 2000 years ago in drawing this picture of N Buddha. And you can see the beautiful face and the lotus flower he's carrying and so on. It also shows that chemistry has been in existence several thousand years ago 
and that's what keeps us going today also. One other thing which I would like to point out is there is a GRC, Gordon Research Conference coming up on the chemical biology of nucleosides and nucleic acids towards human therapeutics, the end of June, which uh, we are organizing. And it's in the beautiful Salva Regina University in Newport, Rhode Island. And uh, the registration is getting filled. And if you want to attend, please do so. And please submit your abstracts. And as a, a person who have walked through most of this oligonucleotide and nucleic acid therapeutics, I want to share also an uh, exciting review what me and Professor Martin Egge of Vanderbilt have put together and which was published last month in Nucleic Acid Research. And this talks about all the 18 oligonucleotide and nucleic acid drugs, including SIRNAs, antisense compounds, splice modulators, aptamers, mRNA vaccines. And this was as of 2022. In 2023, as of two days ago, the compound, ALS compound from Ionis Biogen was approved. And that's also shown here, the Rofersen. And congratulations to the team because this is a great help to ALS patients. And this reminds me to celebrate our success yesterday of a C16 conjugate, which went into CNS, SIRNA, to silence APP gene, which has a C16 side chain as the ligand, and also has the five prime vinyl phosphonate. And when this was administered in the CNS space, intrathecally, it's able to go into all areas within the CNS space, and we announced yesterday that it is it will be able to control Alzheimer's disease as well as cerebral amyloid angiopathy. In the part A, single ascending dose, we have shown the top line phase one data yesterday, and it is very positive and very encouraging. And we are showing a long-term duration and a very high level of knockdown, showing the success of first RNAi product, potential RNAi product in the CNS program for a devastating disease like Alzheimer's disease. With this new two hot stories, I want to point out all the chemical modifications which have been used in the approved 19 compounds. Those are shown here. Those are about 10 chemical modifications. If you leave out the DNA, RNA, and natural phosphodiester, remaining chemical modifications are only seven modifications. And this is irrespective of the work, what went on in the past 40 years, close to 1,000 chemical modifications, only these seven modifications have entered and been successful in clinical trials. This has also includes two chemical delivery systems. One is the lipid nanoparticles showing with the siRNAs and the lipid nanoparticles with the mRNAs shown here. And the second one delivery platform being the GALNAT platform which was built in our laboratories. And these have been again shown in this review. So in this first part, what I would like to share is the introduction and the chemistry and applications of RNA therapeutics, triumph of galenic conjugates, and where are we going with galenic conjugates? When we started alnylam, back in 2002, as 
my friend and mentor, John Mervin, only pointed out the sound that challenge was just figuring out how to get RNA into the body. Here it is, young John. And we decided to use our earlier publications, lipidic nucleic acids, where we conjugated lipids to balance the hydrophilic properties of oligonucleotides. And we used cholesterol conjugate with our friends at Kulmbach, we demonstrated that the systemic administration of siRNAs is possible. And we demonstrated in mouse the first gene silencing due to RNAi. The cholesterol conjugate enabled binding to LDL, HDL, and albumin as shown here in this block separation line, whereas the free molecule doesn't bind to any of these uh, carriers. So we were able to demonstrate APOB silencing, which enabled RNA demonstration possible. We also evaluated a series of lipophilic conjugates, and they all bind to various extents to this LDL, HDL, and albumin, and that provides the broad biodistribution for this lipidic nucleic acids. This led into earlier efforts at alnylam going into more than 25 targets in five different organs, lung, liver, CNS, and various species. And after a lot of struggle, we decided to focus the delivery into liver. And with that, what we have today is our siRNAs are picomolar inhibitors in vitro, and we can demonstrate the EC50 to be 100 nanogram per gram of the tissue. And this 100 nanogram per gram of the tissue translates to one nanogram of the drug in per gram of the risk machinery. And we have also shown the durable mechanism of action once every three months or once every six months of administration and with the hope that we will be able to demonstrate even once a year administration. And here you see the mechanism of RNAi where the slicer, Argonaut 2, in a natural mechanism mimics what's going on in nature. So this catalytic mechanism is able to show this duration of action. Here's the structure of human Argonaut 2, as shown by Limar Joshua Tor at Cold Spring Harbor. Here you can see the five prime antisense strand binding mid domain, three prime antisense strand binding the past domain to the catalytic PV domain. And in the mid-domain, the 5 prime phosphate from the antisense strand binds. And here I put this cartoon because Limo affectionately describes this argonaut as a duck structure. You can see the duck here. With this focus on the liver, we have done three important things namely chemical modifications of the nucleotides and using the lipid nanoparticles, as Erin said, we were able to show the first success of RNAi using the UNPATRO, using the lipid nanoparticle platform. And this is administered intravenously. And these lipid nanoparticles also work by a receptor ligand mechanism here, the ligand being the APOE, endogenous APOE, which binds to these lipid nanoparticles, which traffics into LDL receptor expressed abundantly in the liver hepatocytes. On the other hand, we can take the GANLAC 
it, we can take the double stranded molecule and take the same strand and attach to a trivalent GALAC and make them as a single chemical entity and administer them subcutaneously. And because the GALAC, trivalent GALAC, has the receptor, SDLO glycoprotein receptor, expressed abundantly in the liver hepatocytes. It's taken up very efficiently. And this enabled four products approved, Givlari, Oxlumo, Latvio, and Amvutra. And Givlari for acute hepatic porphyria, end of 2019, and Oxlumo in the following year, uh, primary hyperoxaluria to control the oxalate pro problem. And this is the first compound which was approved for even the pediatric population. The third one is the Litvio, which controls the hypercholesterolemia for global population. And Ambutra in following on patro to control the TTR of myelidosis. All these compounds are safe and works very efficiently and they are in, available for the first time to cure this incurable diseases. In terms of Anpatro, it controls the TTR amyloidosis and this TTR amyloidosis is a genetic problem which causes is this due to the mutation in TTR gene, which is only 120 amino acids and which exists, this protein as a tetrameric structure, but when there is a mutation happens genetically for other reasons, this can lead into folded monomers, which lead into amyloid fiber formation. These amyloid fibers can cause peripheral problems, autonomic function problems, or cardiac problems, cardiomyopathy, and so on and so forth. And this is a problem which is prevalent around the globe. And this is, if it is not treated, the median survival is about five to 10 years. And this is, shows the various devastating situations of the patient affected by TTR myelidosis. And Patro uses the SIRNA shown here. The black walls show the two primal metals. These are the DNA and everything else is an unmodified RNA modification. And we are using an ionizable lipid MC3, and which has a PKA of 6.4 for this nitrogen when assembled as a particle. And this has a bilayer stabilizers, cholesterol and DSPC, a pharmacokinetic modifier, PEG DMG. And this formulation functions as the Trojan horse. And when it's administered, picks up APOE directs it to LDLR in the liver hepatocytes, internalizes in the endosomes, the PKA 6.4 leads into protonation because the pH is five, and this causes the destabilization in the bilayer structure, changing into hexagonal phase, efficient release of siRNAs with a successful endosomalytic release and it causes the release of on petrol. And this freedom is realized for these molecules. And the success story of on petrol was described in the Apollo clinical trials results by the knockdown of the TTR and also NIS plus seven score. And the gratifying notification when I met with Professor Julian Gilmore of the Royal Free Hospital was, he was able to mention to us, in fact, at the OTS 
uh, meeting in 2019, he was telling after giving his talk that so far I was just maintaining my patients through their last years of life. Only now I am able to give their life back. And this gratitude from the patients as well as the clinicians is the reward of Anpatro and this lipid nanoparticles. Lipid nanoparticles enabled RNA therapeutics. It enabled helping the people with TTR amyloidosis, but it also enabled mRNA vaccines. We are able to have a life back almost normal situation because of the success of these lipid nanoparticles. As the Nobel laureate Caroline Petosi says, when the world is in trouble, chemistry comes to its rescue. And this rescue came in the form of lipid nanoparticles. Let me move on to now the Galnac story. In the Galnac, which we started working back in 1998, and then which we shown this work finally published in 2014. In the siRNA, we are attaching trivalent gelnac to the sense strain, and this localizes into liver hepatocytes very efficiently. I want to express my mentor in this area, Professor Jack Van Boom of Leiden, because I had a lot of discussions with him based on his earlier work in 90s with Theo Van Berkel and Martin Bischenbach. And based on that, at ISIS, we took a cholic acid scaffold, tried to attach three galactose sugars designed by my friend Mohan, and this work was synth the synthesis collaboration was done by George Just of McGill and Martin in our team enabled the oligomerization. And this was our venture into trivalent galvanics. And used, using this approach, we made a first proposal at Alilam when we were trying to make the Merck one deal back in 2003. Here you can see this handsome Jack Van Boom standing here. And after the lipid nanoparticles, my leaders at Alilam, John, Akshay, Kevin, they are all interested in this conjugates. They wanted to bring back the conjugates. And we explored the, these molecules and this revolutionized oligonucleotide therapeutics. So the gamma binds to we know ACL of glycoprotein receptor, which is abundantly expressed in liver hepatocytes because it has to do the cleaning mechanism of dead proteins, which has a sialic acid cap. And when that was removed, it exposes the galactoses and these are taken by the stulet looking acyloglycoprotein receptors and goes and internalizes. So we decided to use the same mechanism of this acyloglycoprotein receptor mediated uptake for our trivalent galnax. We defined this. And here the PKPD is governed by the totally by the galnax and we achieve the liver to kidney ratio of greater than 30 at the pharmacokinetic doses. It shows short plasma half-life, long tissue half-life, and long pharmacodinamic effects. But compared to the lipid nanoparticles, we are throwing a conjugate into the body, into the lymph nodes, after subcutaneous administration, rather 
unencapsulated in naked molecule. So to provide the metabolic stability, we need a lot of chemistry. We need a lot of chemistry, but we need to also make this complex molecule. And this was enabled by my fellow alnylam chemists, both at the monomer stage in building this trivalent galenide conjugate, and also in oligomerization then with my friend Klaus and Martin under the leadership of Rajiv, as shown here, we made few milligrams to few kilogram quantities of the trivalent Gerlach building blocks. Now it is made in several hundred kilogram quantities leading into tens and, tens and thousands of molecules, oligonucleotide strands around the world. And these molecules, as I mentioned, bind and activated by argonaut as the slicer. I pointed out, this is the five prime end of the phosphate. And this is the entire structure, the co-crystal structure by done with the uh, microRNA 20A mimic. And that shows the binding interactions of the various amino acids with the GALAC. And how these molecules work. When we introduce the chemical modifications like 2 prime methyls and 2 prime fluoros and phosphorothiamates at the terminal ends, it provides the metabolic stability needed for these GALAC conjugates. So now you can see the black two prime methyls and the green two prime fluoros and the orange phosphorothiolates introduced provide the metabolic stability for the trivalent galvan. And you don't need any stabilization because of our proprietary hydroxyproline linker takes care of the stability of the three prime end. But to improve the potency of the adjacent strand, we introduce a non hydrolyzable phosphate mimic E vinyl phosphonate, and that enables the antisense strand shown at the bottom to bind to the mid domain favorably. To mitigate any possible off target effects, to improve the specificity, we bring the yeah, modified nucleic acid modification, glycol nucleic acids with a short internucleotide linkage. And this short internucleotide linkage at the position seven binds very effectively to the organoid in the kink region, which goes around the position six to eight, and it binds very effectively. And this short internucleotide length discourages binding by mRNA, unrelated mRNAs working in the seed region through thermodynamic binding. So we are causing the thermodynamic destabilization through the glycolic acid. Finally, we have two versions of this five prime morpholino and five prime extended morpholino which will block the phosphorylation of the sense strand and stop any off-target effects due to the sense strand. And this morpholino functions also enables to understand the mechanistic function of the antisense strand because we can block the antisense activity by placing this morpholino here. All these results have been summarized in our accounts of chemical research review, again summarized with, in collaboration with Professor Martin Adley of Vanderbilt. Here you can see the E vinyl phosphonate overlapping with the natural phosphate into the mid domain and making the favorable interactions with the arginines and lysines and favorable interactions on this tyrosines with this E-vinyl phosphonate. 
which has been shown by our crystal structures from us and also from IMS. More interestingly, we have to know where to place the two prime fluorose, where to place the two prime metals. For example, at the position two of the antisense strand, two prime fluoro is tolerated, but not the two prime metal. That is because in the two prime fluoro modifications, it is very well tolerated as shown here. It's a spatial, there is no spatial interactions on the other hand, when we place the whole metal, there is a steric clash. So in th this way, when we are making these modifications, we have to walk through and optimize the sequence as well as the chemical modifications appropriately. As I mentioned in the kink region where the positions six, seven, and eight binds, here is the kink as shown by the argonaut. And in this kink, very effectively, the short interphosphate distance provided by the DNA with the short internucleotide distance of 5.5 angstroms bind nicely with the thermodynamic destabilization. This effect has been described in a recent review published in RNA along with my colleague, Mark Schlegel, and again, Professor Martin Eagle. This is a key slide which shows where we got that one nanogram and 100 nanogram quantities, which I mentioned. When we administer a galvanized conjugate, the pharmacology is dependent on the risk pharmacokinetics. You can see here in the blue line, the short plasma half-life after the administration it just drops and it, the conjugate predominantly distributes to the liver with the long liver half-life, which you can see here going up to 42 days and it is moving. And when this drops, it has an inverse relationship to risk loading. And that's what you see here in this green line. And you can see here, you see this 100 nanogram per gram dose levels, but I mentioned it earlier. And this translates to one nanogram per gram of the risk in loading. And the silencing follows this purple line. So this is the gist of what we have learned from the pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamic properties of these galvanic conjugates. Having known that and having known how to modulate this, we followed this up with another compound, Ambutra, the most important compound for controlling uh, RNAi activity came from our laboratories. And this is also enables controlling TPR myelidosis. Now I should like to point out, and Patro is also being submitted for cardiomyopathy approval and Ambutra is undergoing study for beyond polyneuropathy for potential cardiomyopathy treatment also. Here I show the success of the Ambutra. It's the same sequence, but different chemistry, showing the, again, how this chemical modification and optimization is very important. Here I'm showing the, our failed compound Rebusaran after a 500 milligram administration, it shows okay, 80% knockdown, but it requires a lot of compound and the, it comes back quickly to bring down back the TTR levels. On the other hand, Ambutra, the single dose, 50 milligram dose, effectively knocks down and goes up to like close to 300 days. And this shows the nice translation in humans as proven by the approval of Ampatro, where chemical modifications enable clinical success. The next application of Gamlac conjugates is controlling the acute hepatic paraphernalia by controlling 
the gene alarm synthase one. The amine synthase one molecule causes the deposit of amino megalonic acid and phosphobilinogen, which collects as kind of dirt in the heme pathway. And when they accumulate, it causes acute attacks, mainly in the female. There's no treatment available before Gibosran. We are shutting down LR synthase 1 and able to cure acute hepatic porphyria, as shown here by this lady who got the treatment that Gibosran is life changing. I never thought I would be pain free. Without proper understanding of this porphyria disease, King George was thought he had some kind of madness. Another example of the success of gallina conjugates is controlling pH 1, which leads into the oxalate problem, both in the liver and also in the kidney. In the normal function, glycolate is oxidized in the glyoxalate and the glyoxalate is converted by alanine glyoxalate aminotransferase into glycine. When the AGT fails, the glyoxalate is converted into oxalate. And this happening in the liver and it damages the liver and also damages the kidney, causing the kidney stones. So the only cure possible is the double replacement of both the liver and kidney where oxalumo fixes or shuts down the glycolate oxidase and able to help both the pediatric population and the adult population from this devastating oxalate problem. The next one is the, for a global disease, for controlling hypercholesterolemia by shutting down PCSK9 gene. And this is potentially the first millions of people global RNAi therapeutic. PCSK9 degrades LDL receptor, which is needed to control LDL cholesterol metabolism. So when we are silencing PCSK9, we are able to recuperate LDL receptor levels. And this causes the reduction of LDL cholesterol. As you can see, once every six months dosing brings a 284 milligram dose in 60% reduction in cholesterol. And this has been tested more than 10,000 patients around the world. And this is being evaluated for controlling 30,000 cardiovascular patients in the next three years in UK based on an agreement between Novartis, who owns this compound now, and the UK government. Now, the metabolic disease and this implications in the cardiovascular disease have been shown by this compound in Clisaran. Another metabolic complication is hypertension. And to control hypertension, alylum has ALN AGT. And if hypertension is not controlled, it can lead into stroke, heart attack, arteriosclerosis, and kidney failure. The most important results from ALN AGT are called the Zilebizaram. It's shown here, it can reduce the serum AGT by more than 90% for six months. And more impressively, the systolic blood pressure is greater than 20 millimeter mercury is reduced. And also the consistent blood pressure reduction, both in the day and night is shown here in this part, but also change in the RAS biomarkers. So we have a potential cue for hypertension in the form of zilobisimum. And the two clinical studies are ongoing 
and hopefully we will be able to report this this year. Having, uh, having looked at these cardiovascular programs due to the hypercholesterolemia and blood pressure and also high glucose numbers or diabetes, we have decided to take this Galnet platform into Gemini platform. Here, what we are showing here is connecting two siRNAs through a linker through the sense strands, but having only one Galnet for both siRNAs. One siRNA targets HPTL3, which reduces atherogenic lipids. So both the, the cholesterol levels as well as the glyceride levels. And as I mentioned, the angiotensinogen is in the other arm to control the blood pressure. And here is the result of this Gemini construct. What is shown in the block lines is a mixture of two constructs, separately two siRNAs. And what is shown in the yellow is the Gemini construct. You can see this beautiful overlap of the black and yellow lines are silencing both targets. And this single vial will control two genes involved in the metabolic pathways and potentially will be helpful for cardiovascular patients. Another approach, another application of Galnai conjugates is in the form of reverse here because the siRNAs are very potent and long duration is achieved. Sometimes we need an antidote to control the antisense strand of the siRNAs. And this is provided in the form of a reverse here. So we administer the complementary strand after when the silencing magnitude is ongoing. And that is what the function of the reverse here here you can see without the reverse here, the silencing function is going for a long duration. Once we administer the reverse here, the gene is brought back to its normal levels or the desired level. The best application of this is to control this blood pressure medicine we wanted so that we don't get these low blood pressure conditions. The reverse here for ALN AGT is shown here by after the administration of the reverse year, we are bringing back the AGT levels to a reasonable healthy levels by the administration of this reverse year as shown by this non-human primate studies. Now in the next few minutes, I will quickly go through some of the other recent applications. And this is to answer the question, what have you done for us lately? And I am stealing a quote from Professor Craig Mello, and he has said, I'm still turning over stones, hoping to find something new. Because as Kevin Costner said, in the field of dreams, if you build it, they will come. Namely, this chemical modification would be useful someday. So in this context, I want to point out, we have evaluated chiral phosphothiabates as a single modification at the terminal ends, and which we published this last year. And I'm going to simply summarize that the RP isomer provides stability as well as optimized mid-domain binding to antisense strand at the high time end, whereas the SP isomer provides greater stability and optimal pass domain binding at the three prime end. As shown here in this structure, I ask you to refer into the last year publication in nucleic acids research. And because we encountered a problem of Galnac modification due to the cleavage of the beta glycosidase linkage. We wanted to stabilize this beta glycosidase linkage in a greediness to improve the long duration even further. We brought a lot of chemical modifications, changing the oxygen into nitrogen 
sulfur, urea, and carbon linkages, and shown compared to the oxygen linkage, this normal chemical modifications maintain the glycosidase stability as measured and shown here. But this improved metabolic stability when we did this SAR study did not translate into improved duration of action, teaching us that nature is always superior to mankind. And here we showed that the liver levels of even the handicapped oxygen is equivalent to other modifications. The reason being, one, the gallate is taken up quickly within 15 minutes, and the calcium binding in the acyloglycoprotein receptor in the carbohydrate recognition domain is, con is governed by the front end, not by the rear end here. So we have studied this learning, pointing out the anomeric linkage, metabolic stability is not detrimental to efficient acylo glycoprotein receptor binding. And second thing, anomeric linkage, metabolic stability, it doesn't contribute to duration of RNAi activity. So this is a kind of structure activity relationship. In the interest of time, I want to go into the final summary, what we have learned and where we are to work as a community, which we have summarized last year in collaboration with Professor Dama and Professor Kore. Will other ligands replicate the success of GANAC? There are some promise from lipophilic molecules, as I mentioned, the C16, and some promise from integrins. But can we identify other ligands so that we can go and explore every other tissue? And related to the GANAC story, I want to sum just to summarize a few other questions. Can endosomal escape be honest to enhance drug potency? Can we achieve oral drug delivery for these conjugates and for oligonucleotide therapeutics? Can we clearly, unequivocally succeed in the CNS space and also for the other tissues? And whether we can approach the oncology problem or whether we can achieve controlling kidney diseases using oligonucleotides, and whether we can get an mRNA-based medicine, not a vaccine in the near future. These are the questions which we came across, and we are making progress as we are seeing all the efforts going on in the field. But there is a solution for all these questions that solution is chemists and scientists back to the bench, as suggested by John Paul Baer back in 1993. With that, I want to thank all my colleagues again, and thank you very much for your patience. Hopefully, I have left a few minutes to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Manu. That was an excellent uh, overview of uh, the, the, I would say, the last uh, decades of uh, uh, Galnac research. So I think there are uh, quite a few uh, questions in the in the chat. So uh, let's start with these. And I think the very first question, I think, is mentioned quite a few times within the chat. Is uh, is also mentioned on your last slide. So uh, you asked the question. So I will ask it to you. Uh, so. Uh, can endosomal escape be harnessed to enhance drug potency? So, so 
any chance if we uh, enhance that, if we can improve that, 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 that uh, will improve the, the, the delivery part and the potency? Yeah. What are your thoughts about that? Interesting problem. Um, because we have shown in a very nice paper published by Chris Brown from our laboratories that endothelialytic peptides when attached to gamma again release. And this shows two things to us, namely reagents capable of reaching where these molecules are can cause this effective release. That is one thing. The second thing, those peptides also, peptide conjugated to gamma, it also shown that where these molecules are hiding and where they are creating the long time duration, what we observe, sitting in the... So sometimes I think like, actually we are gifted that these molecules are able to live longer sitting in the endosomes and slowly releasing for the six months. And if we can slightly increase it even more, we can reduce the dose. So we can balance out, but the bringing back the endosomalytic peptide story, I think there is a possibility with the appropriate safe reagents, we can achieve that. And I'm sure as we, you might have heard several times, our friend Steve Gandhi always talks about it. He simply hopes that he can solve this problem. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, let's go for a few uh, short questions. So there are many uh, questions in the chat. I would go to uh, uh, try to go through as many as possible. So a uh, short answer, if, uh, if possible. So I think the first one you already answered uh, partly, uh, but it might be interesting to know. So in a uh, question from uh, Xu Yu Tan, um, in your opinion, what would be the next target or organ or tissue uh, uh, after liver using ligands such as Galnac? So what is the next uh, tissue? We are very optimistic about the CNS space. And we are also, there is a lot of evidence, not only from us, from other sources that muscle can be reached. And we, we have, you know, so in the interest of time, I will just stop there. In the <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Art Kik has a question. Are, are there any chemistries or modifications that are harder to deliver with Galnac compared to others? For example, PMO or PNA? Oh, we have shown that the PNA chemistry can be delivered using GALAC, and we have shown that very nicely. Uh, and the PNA can be used, for example, as a reverse And similarly, PMO has also been used. Hey, if you can, okay. uh, let's see. Uh... Uh, a question from Sun Yang. Uh, will there be a concern about the CMC of uh, Gemini platform in the future? Uh, we, we have, I think we have overcome that. We, uh, we know how to make long sense strands and we are able to address that very nicely. So this has been shown in multiple Gemini molecules. Okay. Uh, Actually, quest help the CMC because you are changing a two-mile problem into a one-mile problem. Question from Sonia: Is there any information about the distribution of Galnac siRNA in other uh, cell types, in other liver cell types, uh, such as uh, Kupfer cells? Not really. Not really. It's mainly in the you know whatever we have seen so far. And there is also a publication, as you know, and, you know, people who want that to go into Kupfer cells have made a simultaneous conjugate of both, you know, manos and Galvan. So, uh, question about the Galnac itself. Uh, so there are many variations of Galnac factors. Are they all equal? And what matters in design? Well, they have shown based on the first principles of the distances known from the crystal structure, what is the optimum distance needed between the three 
like on groups and also between the linker and this. We have made that, we have shown that. That is one factor. The second factor is the arbitrity. When the molecules come together, how they are recognized by the two domains. So we have evaluated and published quite a bit on this. So I refer them to the, our publications. Okay. Uh, it appears that the risk loaded antigen strength concentrations are variable. What's the typical concentration of risk loaded antigen strength? As I mentioned, you know, that's one nanogram per gram of the risk. Yeah, and then I have a question from uh, Arnab. Um, so how do you calculate the EC50 of SINR translating into one nanogram per gram of risk? Okay, again, in the interest of time, I, I don't want to go through that. It has been described in our uh, 2018 papers, two papers. One is Dan Foster as the first author, second one is JNI as the first author. We have okay. effectively shown that calculation, showing a few hundred molecules. Okay, nice. So we'll refer to the, to the publication. So a question from Shen Yang. Uh, hi, Mano. Thanks for your great contribution to this field. I have two questions. So question one, what is the unique function of the hydroxypropolinol uh, bring to GAMAC as RNA? Uh, is it for uh, IP considerations or other reasons? So that was question one. Okay, as an oligonucleotide chemist, I was looking for basically a molecule which has a primary hydroxyl and a secondary hydroxyl and a nitrogen group where I can attach a ligand. So that's why we chose this molecule back in 2003. And this molecule being derived from proline, it's very cheap and chirally pure material coming from the natural sources. And Soon after that, we realized because of the structure, it also provides stability against the exonucleases. So all these great things come in this one form of this small molecule. So we love that molecule and we move forward. Okay, and then the second question is, by only chasing the Galnac linker chemistry, could it increase the potency and duration of Galnac as iRNA? Uh, we, we have shown that, you know, the not optimized linkers and changing the valency, of course, from trivalent to divalent or monovalent, you can, you know, compromise the binding affinity. Same thing with the linker designs also. Okay, question from Noah. How does Galnac perform in liver cancer? Oh, that's the... interesting. It right now we will know, uh, we will know soon and we will be, uh, it has a lot of promise possible there. Okay, uh, so let's keep. Uh, a question regarding the PKPD correlation of GALNA conjugates. What is known about the location of siRNA in the liver or hepat hepatocytes mediating the extremely long knockdown? So why is the knockdown so, uh, yeah. so good? This is again um, described in our uh, Chris Brown nucleic acid research paper is showing in the endosomalytic compartments because just like in the case of LNPs, when we send this endosomalytic peptides, they're released from the endosomes. Then you don't see any more silencing activity. So we have kind of narrowed down. Okay. Uh, I think you mentioned it before, but are there any improvements uh, for uptake to the muscle? To muscle? You said? Muscle. Yeah, the, we are evaluating again the C16 and like others, we are also evaluating the peptides and antibodies and all other ligands. So please wait and see. Okay, uh, in general, what size of an RNA strand is ideal to escape the endogenous risk activity from degrading RNA drugs that are not part of the SI RNA drug family? Oh, we, we have, you know, people have tried various lengths. It's more from the recognition from the organoid is needed rather than about the degradation profile. And, uh, you know, there is a, a double SIRNAs are being used and we are using a 21-23 mark. So 
as long as chemistry is modified, this is uh, they they all work effectively. Good. Uh, let's go for one last question um, from uh, Biju. Uh, thanks for sharing your knowledge on nucleic acid drugs. Uh, how about the nuclease digestion of these nucleic acid drugs? Uh, are all nucleic acid drugs required to be protected by LNP to direct to the target itself? Not, not necessarily. Once you have the appropriate chemical modifications, they don't need the LNPs. Yeah. Cool. Um, the enzymes can work on the chemically modified molecules. Yeah, so Manu, uh, thanks a lot for uh, for joining uh, in this webinar. We still, uh, I'm, I'm sorry that we could not answer uh, all the questions within the chat. I tried to summarize them a bit uh, to cover most of the the questions on the on, on different topics. So um, I'm pretty sure that if you have questions, uh, when you have questions for Manu, that you can just uh, uh, reach out. Um, so once again, thank you very much for this very inspiring uh, webinar. Um, if you want to look back, uh, the webinar will be placed on the OTS website, I think within uh, 24 hours from now. And then I have one last uh, announcement. Um, so the OTS uh, started a, a mentor program and we are looking for uh, both mentors and mentees. Um, for that, you have to be a member of the uh, OTS. Uh, how to become a member of the OTS is on the website. And the good thing is when you're a member of the OTS, uh, you get a discount on the registration cost. So in principle, uh, it is for free if you uh, if you go to the annual meeting uh, in, uh, in Barcelona this year. Um, so all the information about the mentor program can be found on the, uh, on the website. And uh, with this, I would like to thank, uh, once again, I uh, would like to thank Mano. Uh, for giving this excellent presentation. I would like to thank Aaron for uh, for joining me as a, as a co-host. And uh, the next webinar will be in uh, two weeks. Um, so we uh, rescheduled the webinar. So it was first uh, supposed to be on uh, May 4, but we rescheduled it to uh, May 11th. Uh, and then uh, Laura Sepp will talk about her uh, research. So uh, yeah, once again, thank you very much for joining and uh, see you in two weeks. Ronald, thank you. You can send the questions to my email or you know, LinkedIn. I'll try to answer them. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mano, for your time. Yeah.